hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. We're going to do an interview with Tony Booth today. Legendary fighter from Hull. He's got a great story. So let's uh, let's give Tony a ring, see what he's up to. It's 11 o'clock. I said 11 to him. How are you doing, Tony? Not bad, how are you? All right. Yeah. How are you coping with this uh, lockdown? Uh, it's all right, it's passing quick, isn't it? Passing quick. <laughs> what, what are you up to these days, Tony, anyway? Uh, doing boxing shows, boxing classes, stuff like that. Yeah. I've just got uh, done a bit of work with uh, vulnerable kids. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good then, isn't it? Yeah, not bad, pal, not bad. Uh, looking at your career, I've had a good look today. You've uh, you've been around the block, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've retired more than the social security. Oh. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's back up a little bit then. What made? Let's start from the beginning. What made you want to get into boxing, Tony? Why did you choose boxing? My dad didn't mind it, then I didn't even go boxing or army barracks. And uh, I went boxing, bust his kids nose and limp, and then I just just started, just got the book and just started going when I was ten. Yeah. 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 So you like you liked you just liked it then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember your first amateur fight? Oh yeah, first amateur fight, yeah, yeah I, was, I was winning the fight. <laughs> And I covered up in uh, covered up for five seconds and the referee stopped it. Yeah, he's a bit of a wanker the referee, you know what I mean? He was just stopping him all early all the time. Yeah. Then just a quick story, then what I ended up saying a professional, I was training in Sheffield, Brendan Ingle with the uh, amateurs and pros, then when I came back to all the old boys, he was in charge of the club and he banned me from the club. Who did? Wanker. Oh, this referee, referee, yeah. Oh, uh, your first fight, you fought Paul Lynch. Do you remember much about it? Um, did, did he beat me on points, today? Beat you on points, yeah, in Watford. Yeah. No, you 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 won your first. So you lost your first, then you won four on trot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you lost in in Stoke on Trent against Sean McCrory. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was close as well. 
but Dave Lemon was in the crowd as well, so that makes me a bit. Is that his brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you've been in with Neville Brown as well, haven't you? Big Nev. Uh, yeah, well, Neville Brown, was, I was in my mate's house and I was just said, fuck it, I was saying, I'm good over fire and bit skin. Then they ran up by the bar and I was noticed to get down somewhere. Was it Jewsbury somewhere? I don't know. Barry. And I was not. Where? No, no, sorry. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Alfreton. Alfreton, oh, Derbyshire. Yeah, 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 about an hour's notice. And he, uh, he beat me on points, yeah. Yeah, that's good. See, that's the problem, innit, with fighters taking fights at short notice like that. I have a problem with that, me. I yeah, don't well, think I only had five, well, I fought for the British title, I only had five weeks of noise there. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, I don't really be like that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Used and abused, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'm hoping to change all that by calling people out on this. I, I think boxing needs, it needs, it, it's a sport that's not governed. It, it's the sport where the lions are ruled by the rats. If, do you see what I know that sounds harsh, doesn't it? But the promoters yeah. couldn't hold the candle to the fighters, but yet they're in charge, and the lions are the fighters, and they, they just yeah. do as they're told. And I don't agree with it. Everybody tiptoes about. Nobody wants to upset anybody, and blah de blah de blah, and this is happening, that's happening, and fighters get checked poorly and that, and I have a big problem with that, a massive problem. Every time I see Border Control, I terrorise them, terrorise them at Dennis's shows, and they run for their lives, terrorise them, uh, and that's what they need. I even terrorise the drug testers because they're not doing the job properly. It needs governing, and like I said, this is part of what I'm I, I'm about now going through your record you you've beaten some good lads but when you've lost against these nobodies you've been taking it at an hour I'm not saying the nobodies but lesser fighters you're taking it at an hour's notice to get a few quid I don't agree with it, it it's not right yeah, yeah yeah and I suppose it's always been like that hasn't it yeah yeah but like you say I had five weeks notice for the British title and then we got a lot of uh, they didn't they say to me, oh, you're fighting in two months, three months, you know what I mean? It's just a bit of a joke, then you're actually in some money, didn't you? Yeah. I mean... And, and to be honest, all the fights that I've had, I'm, I'm lucky if I've got, like, a proper receipt or many of the fights. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're all cash, in it. Yeah. It's not good, mate. It's not good at all. It's people being used and abused. The promoters are driving Rolls Royces and Bentleys, and the fighters are driving Mondeos. It's no good. Yeah, now... Some of, some of the managers are driving Rolls Royces as well. Yeah, well, some of the managers are not even board registered, are they? And nobody's saying a word. They're all just uh, turning a blind eye. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not good. Uh Moving on then, you fought my good friend Nick Manners, didn't you, to a draw in Dewsbury? Yeah, 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 well, same again, he was fighting for Mickey Duff and he'd had a pop and have a ten fight stop to all, a box stick. He always makes out as if he, he won it, but... <laughs> he will, Nick, won't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then someone commented, I can't remember, it might have been Pat Barrett or someone commented, but obviously there would have been on Mickey Duff's side, and the thing is, if you think if I, if you're boxing in Leeds and you get a joint Leeds, I think you've won, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but look, looking through your record... Yeah. You, you get a decision. But he was alright, Nick, you know what I mean? He's alright. Yeah. You've been in with James Cook as well, haven't you? In uh, Bethnal Green at your call. Oh? James Cook. I think I boxed him twice, have not Yeah, yeah, you boxed him in oh, your what call. Happened, what happened, what happened, I was training, I was training quite hard. I was training quite hard for the James Cook fight, then I came home on the weekend before I popped out for a drink, uh, as you do, and uh, we got into the street fight and I think I dislocated my foot. Never. So now I'm, I'm, I'm boxing and I'm eating one of the rounds, so me, me hand went a bit, so I, I, I like, uh, I got a bit on points on the right round, so I didn't do bad with one hand. Yeah, then you went on and you fought Ralph Rocciani, didn't you? That's a, that was a good fight for you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Danny Mancini said he's a better boxer than him. But yeah. He won't stop him because he's real hard. Well, his brother is like Graciano, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. So he took him on the left hook and he just smiled at me. Yeah. And the first thing that comes into your mind is a uh, mum. <laughs> mum, then he uh, I just boxed and I got to join Germany. 
I've got, I've got a drill in Germany with him, so if you get a drill with a German in Berlin... That's a win. Yeah. yeah. The, next day, the next day, he's a good kid, I was playing golf with him, but he, uh, he won't call the bunker. Won't he? No, they get it in German, won't call the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. But, uh, but you've been in with Dean Francis as well, haven't you? Yeah, that was short notice. Well, to be honest, Dean, I think he stopped me wanting to own this. I think he punched that Dean on me. That obviously, I won't change. I won't change. Ready for the fight, and he just fired up, boom, he's good. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. But he was like, oh, he wanted his uh, dad now, and unfortunately. Yeah. Montel yeah. Griffin, you fought Montel Griffin? Yeah, well, that was, to be honest, that was just a money fight. He just got a decision on Roy Jones and said, Oh, you're getting five grand. And I was there for the money. Yeah. Dominic Ingalls says, Hey, it's ten rounds, just grab a move. I said, Listen, I ain't going to ten rounds. I mean, so I'm not So sometimes you've got to, I mean, at the end of my career, they're getting, you, they're getting you there to get knocked out, but I've never been knocked out, you know what I mean? Sometimes you've got to use your head. Yeah. You've got to use your, you've got to use your head and, like, don't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Prince. You know, listen, hey, listen to this. I'm spying on Nigel Ben. Yeah. Spying on Nigel Ben, 100 quid a day, and no, it's like an old day. I spied with him all the time. When he beat John McClellan, I was his only spying partner. Then so we're in there, Tenerife, nice, nice places. But it's like an old day. Then I come back from the Ningles history. He said, I got you a sparring job. I got you a sparring job. He said, it's GB Yellow or Buster Keenan. Henry Akin, Henry Akiwandi. Do you remember Henry, Henry Akiwandi? Yeah, yeah, six yeah. Foot, six, six foot seven. Foot seven. Yeah. Six yeah. foot seven or something. South Force of it. Heavyweight. He said, it's even you or Buster Keating. I think we took fucking Buster Keating. I had done it. <laughs> 30 <laughs> pound a day. You know what I mean? Stop your pants down. He iced John Fury him, didn't he? Do what? Akiwandi iced John Fury in seven minutes. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, is that Tyson's dad? Tyson's dad, yeah, he iced him in seven minutes. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Big awkward, big awkward lump, wasn't he? Big awkward lump with long arms. Well, you wouldn't even put anyone, I mean, 30 pound a day is when you were sparring, that way, wasn't it, Joe? So you would have been sparring Nigel Ben when he were knocking around with Essex boys then in Tenerife? Uh, no, I just missed one or two of them, but he was with a few lads and I was with him. Still, yeah. <laughs> Shows on there, Carl and Leeds and uh, Cas Pennant. Right? I mean, I put shows on. He's all right, there, all right, Cal, right? Yeah. Uh, you've been in with Johnny Nelson. Tell me about that. The entertainer. The man who throws a jab while he's going backwards. Well, well Johnny, I've seen it the same camp with Johnny, so I want to fight. I was supposed to fight someone. I should be fighting Johnny. So I'm fighting Johnny. It's the same camp, but not me. It was like different weight and all that, so I just took a down day first off. Never? Yeah, yeah. What's well, the point getting banged about, you know what I mean? I was, I mean, I want, I mean, it's just, I should have boxed him, so I was just there for the money, you know what I mean? It's just it's a bit of a piss take, to be honest. Yeah, uh, who were training you for Johnny Nelson? Well, I'd have been in the same, same camp. Was so, the same camp, then I think something happened, and I had to fight his opponent. So, you remember, he was in one of the best world title fights ever, only got in Elston when he fought that Carlos De Leon. That was the worst fight I've ever seen, mate. I've seen it. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was, yeah. They were throwing beer cans at Johnny, he had to run to the oh, dressing room. Yeah, 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 yeah. It stunk Sheffield out that night. Well, if I had Johnny's arms and body, I'd be knocking everyone out of that for the size of him, he's massive, Yeah, but he's got the art of a breadcrumb. Yeah, 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 that's fair enough. He's, yeah. He just blagged his way, didn't he, that so. I'm disappointed that they've put an Ingle fighter in with an Ingle fighter, knowing what the result's going to be. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I mean, yeah, yeah. Definitely if it was like an exhibition or something, but it's just... Yeah, I'm not happy with that. But looking at these other ones, you've been in with uh, Crawford Ashley. Yeah. Mark Prince. Yeah, yeah. Cr Crawford yeah. Ashley uh, iced you, didn't he? Were he a big puncher? He, uh, he beat me in the first round that he'd done. Uh, I boxed for the British title against him, and he's like, put me on the first two rounds, and the sixth round, it's neck and neck, and I mean, he's like, well, I'll be took a couple of rounds down. And he was neck, and I was neck, and I went down for like a standard eight count. And I said, there's no standard eight count, so that was my biggest regret, because I still had a lot, I still had a lot left. And if you ask Crawford Ashley, then he was naked as well. 
Yeah, I think he had stamina problems. I want to go down at the top of that way. Yeah, you've you've uh, you've got a very colourful career. Did you fight another one at Manners family as well? Let me have a look. Colin Manners, I boxed him. I boxed him in the ABAs at Barnsley, and he's knocking everyone out. And I boxed his head off. I won every round. Yeah. And they said by a majority decision, then all the crowd started bowling and they gave it to him. But then I turned pro, Brendan Ingle, he was there in the crowd, and uh, he turned pro, Mickey Duff, and I beat him as a pro. Yeah, you beat him in your third fight. It was his debut. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, that's a, that was a good win, that, because he was touted to do well, wasn't he, him, Colin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, look at... Well, uh, John Beckles as well as John Beckles. He was a uh, WBA champion. Yeah. Looking at the yeah. these other ones here, you've been in with uh, Michael Sprott. Yeah, I boxed him and I was nice. Just ran up to fight him on a show and I went down there, boxed him and I was nice. Six threes, I think it was, he beat me on points. And I leaned over the rocks just to see him grow. So if I was being fit, I'd be good. Yeah. Is he alright, Michael Scott? Nice block. Yeah, he is. He's, I've, I've met that, uh, Michael, he's a nice he's kid. He was, was fast. He didn't really hurt me, but he was fast, I thought. Fast on me now, he was fast, but he was quite fast. You beat one of Dennis's close pals as well, Dominic Negus. Oh yeah, well they're up again. I went down the same day to fight in it. Was it Bristol? Yeah. He's alright, Dominic, he's a nice kid. Get yeah. Right, Dominic. Yeah. Mark Krentz, you've, you've been in with him, Mark Krentz. Denzel I've Brown from him, Leeds. I've watched him twice, but Mark Krentz. Dennis is Dennis Hobson, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Big, big talky boy. Yeah. Denny, yeah. Denzel Brown, he's, uh, he's just been acquitted of murder, hasn't he, Denzel? Was he? Yeah, and he leads in a big, massive trial, acquitted. He's all right, Was Denzel, he? nice bloke. Innocent, though, yeah, he didn't well, do I it. Drill, I got a drill with him in Leeds, then I boxed him for an area title, and he sort of hit me twice. And his gloves, I, I never got cut. He sort of hit me, they cut both my hands, they got stopped, both my hands got cut. Yeah, he's got hands like shovels, hasn't he, Denzel? Yeah, but the first time, it didn't really bother me, but... The next time, he must have had some dust on his gloves or something. Just <laughs> sort of, twice of the both cut, both my ass cut, yeah. Denzel likes to punch him and then sit back and admire his work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he told me anyway. Enzo Macu and Ellie have been in. We went to point with Enzo in, in Enzo's tenth fight. Then you fought David A on David A's debut. Now tell me about that fight and how you come to be offered it. That was in your call. Well, my manager at the time, uh, Eugene Maloney, he was, just, I think he was looking after David A in a couple of fights and he just rang me up and said, Would you fight him? I said, I'll fight David A. I said, I mean, I've been training out. I said, Well, they said, No, no, fight him. I said, I'll fight him. I said, I'll give you five grand. I said, I'll fight him. Yeah. So I put me down first round, I don't know if got a second round and I got pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. What are you fast? It's, it's, like, it's like you say, if you've had the notice, I mean, some of these kids now need like three months notice, don't they? Yeah. Five weeks was the longest I had. Yeah, uh, were David A fast then? Yeah, it was fast. It, yeah, it was fast. No, they were not out there. Yeah, he's fast, yeah. One of the best kids I've lost was called Eddie Smalders. Yeah. Well, at the end, they were being a European champion. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. It's a very, very... Martin Rogan, you've been in with him. Big Rogie. Yeah, but what happened there? I'm on the Ricky Hatton Bill. And I should have been... Uh, I should have been... They got me gloved up and all that. About 10 o'clock to go, he gloved up and all that. And then he said, oh, no, sit down. You aren't going in now. Went in about... Half twelve. So about the time then, you know, I, mean, I, thought, I was like, ready to have a go at ten o'clock. Going at half twelve, and I'm like, got to be a fair show on the day. Yeah. Like that. Same again, it's like, the thing is, it's happened about four times. When the show gets late, all the other boxers, they end up getting paid off. But they always put me on. To, I'd always put a decent show on. You know what I mean? They got paid without fighting. And I had to go in and I thought, oh, fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Uh, who's best guy that you've uh, sorry? Who's best guy that you've sparred? Sparred. Yeah. Uh, I think it was uh, Carl Zaki. I've been in with Ben and uh, Carl Thompson, but Carl Zaki. Well, they just talk with that when the south was and that, that way. I spar with Nicky Pipe, that was alright. Carl Thompson, alright, Nigel Ben, Kazaki was just more awkward southpaw. Did, oh, did you fight Carl Thompson in pros? No, I just sparred with him at Mossad a few times. Yeah, he's a tough kid, isn't he, Carl? Yeah, right, nice kid, nice kid. Yeah, yeah very nice kid, isn't he? Very well, nice. I boxed Morris Crowe, he's a British he's champion, one of Morris Crowe, I boxed him. Yeah, he's a good pal of mine, Steve Foster, the white kid from the same gym, Chance yeah. Camp. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy, and Dennis likes him, you know, I, I think he's alright, him, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve Foster, he's a proper Manchester kid, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, well, Salford, of course. Salford, isn't it? Salford, is, oh, is that? But, but, but when Manuel would everything, he's from Manchester, one day I wouldn't know, he's from Salford, you know, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who's biggest puncher you've ever been in with, sparring or as a pro? Uh, Oval McKenzie? No, no, what happened, what, what happened when I boxed him? Uh, two seconds, let me just have a look. I think he beat you on points. Yeah, yeah sorry, I don't want to fight. Yeah, I think that Eddie Spalders get up on you. Punched. Punched out Eddie Spalders. Yeah. It's different, I mean, I boxed out with Chisora, he was forced on everything, mate. Didn't really hurt me. But at the time, there's 40,000 watching, so you maybe get, you get, you go along with the adrenaline, don't you? What show were that on? It was on the, uh, Joe Kalzaki, Pete Manfredo at the Millennium. Peter Manfredo, what were he doing in there? About 40,000, you what? What were Peter Manfredo doing in that arena? But uh, Bobby Joe yeah, Edwards. He was a uh, sugary Lenny. Mm. He, he had a shock into me because I did a bit of show, but uh, there's only four. I was fighting Chizor and I knew it was about 30 seconds left, so I did about 30 seconds of show, but yeah. Did you? I mean, did you get paid well for that? Yeah, I think so, yeah, but I, I, I met him with a bad Chizor, but it was on Frank Warren's TV, and they took it off, and I can't find it anyway, you know, and he makes him look bad. Yeah. <laughs> they still get rid of it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what goes on, isn't it? Yeah. It's like Liverpool playing Man United and being a bad game and match at day not match at day not putting highlights on. You know, years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good, is it? But uh, Joan Carlos Gomez, twenty-seven and oh, he uh, knocked you out in Germany. Not me out. I've never been there. I must have stopped. Stopped. Yeah, TKO. Sorry, it's TKO. Yeah, Joan Carlos Gomez, don't you remember? Where was that in? That were in Germany, Dusseldorf. No, uh, Dusseldorf, no. What was that? Did I ever fight before that or after? What was it? Uh, hang on a minute. No, sorry, I've got it on the wrong page. <laughs> you were like thinking then, oh, did I? Did I fight him? Sorry. No, I've, 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 I've ended up on another page with that, sorry. You were like that then, weren't you? Scooby Doo Be Doo! Victor Cordoba, tell me about him. Yeah, he was, uh, was a good boxer, wasn't he? Uh, well, the old 40s beat Michael, didn't he? Yeah. He got, he got a job, but I boxed him in Marseille. Like I said, it was in another easy fight, I thought. Mm. And he uh, just beat me on points. Who's got best skill set you've ever been in with, Tony? Well, if he if he if he counts sparring as well. Yeah. I, well, honestly, Prince Nassim, he was like he could punch as well for the Nile Stone kid. Have you sparred Nazim, yeah? I sparred him all the time. He has to train when I was all the time when he's all 15, 16, he could punch out, yeah. Could he? He's, he's most he's, he's most one of the most talented, you know what I mean? But yeah. Just when he got to when he got I looked him some. They got to America and it's like coming out all, all, all that Islam stuff and all that, but you don't need it all, do you? Yeah. Were you nervous before you fought for the British title, Tony? Uh, well, I, I would have been, because when you're fighting, you know, they always get more nervous, you know, but the, uh, 
to be honest, he put me down the first or second, or then I really got into the fight. That's my biggest regret. I still, have, I still have a good bit left, and I went down for a breathing. Then I thought I get stuck into him. Then that Mickey Man stopped it, which was a bit old money. I thought, well, Crawford Ashley's from Leeds, and Mickey Van's from Leeds, so really, I don't think he's enough with refereeing it. Yeah, uh, good old Mickey Van, eh? What would we have done without him all them years? With them Rick, Ricky Hatton, WBU uh, defences. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, now, moving off boxing here, you've uh, had a colourful career outside of boxing, haven't you, Tony? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You've had a few run ins, haven't you? Stayed at Air Manchester's hotel. Well, uh, strange ways. Nine years, and did, what did you learn about doing your nine straight? Well, the first time, the first time I got arrested, I pinched a, a lorry lot of the calendars, a million pounds worth. But, uh, calendars? Yeah, a million pounds worth of calendars, but I only got 12 months. Jesus, what are we going to do with all them? Do you get it? <laughs> calendars, 12 months. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, mate. Uh, but you you moved on obviously from now from that now then uh, you're happy doing your your shows and that now aren't you? What? Yeah, what what, what would the t you're happy doing your shows and that now these events that you're putting on and that? Well, to be honest, I'm working I'm working with the young kids that some yeah. of the best one, like vulnerable kids, so you can give it back. And when I, when I was in jail, I was doing talks to Bally Beer, I was doing talks to vulnerable kids there. Because you get some of these young kids on these county lands now, taking drugs all over the place, and it's, yeah. it's, a, bit of a, bad, it's a bit of a bad thing. And I, mean, and I, said, to this, I said to this copper, I was training this copper, and when I came out of jail, I said, I got arrested, I got made an example. I said, I can nail all six drug dealers now. I said, I won't do it, but I could do it. I said, how come no one gets arrested? He said, oh, Tony, we've been totally off the drugs and concentrate on domestic violence. Jesus. Ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, after domestic violence, it's caused from fuel drugs anyway. Or booze, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, just, mainly booze, isn't it, I think. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What would the uh, 50 year old Tony Booth say to the 20 year old Tony Booth who were turning pro? Yeah, it's uh well I mean it's, like someone like like you say, you know Paul Dennis Hobson, he'd be like right, Dennis, you know what I mean, when you know I think he looks after his boxes, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean someone said to me before about setting camp, he said, Oh, his user is a piece of meat, you know what I mean? Well that's what Dennis said last night on here, he said uh fighters use Look, well, everybody uses everybody, don't they? Dennis said, like promoters and money, and it, that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? It's like trading cattle, yeah. isn't it? No, I mean, it's fair enough trading. If the, the kid just wants to fight, I mean, later on, I want him to fight. I'd fight anyone for the money. But when you're setting out, like when I set out, I uh, I was running like nine mile a day. I'd train hard. I could help. I mean, but then I, I was in Sheffield. You I got any further away in Sheffield? I was in Ellsbury, train at Winkerbank. Then I was in like a bed seat. And I got there in Sheffield when I wasn't earning no money, which is ridiculous, you know what I mean? Because you need money to live, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you say, yeah, I mean, I was going to start, I was going to go from a trial license. So I was from a trial license to train some kids, and I think I've got a lot of talent to train someone. Yeah. And then I was training this kid, and then he, he said, ah, oh, I don't know, and I thought, I thought I'm 50 now. I thought, is it really worth messing about with that? I thought, I'm sure. Getting with these kids, these vulnerable kids. I don't know white collars, my white collars. I'm, 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 I'm in the program on the other day, just slating your white collars. Man, I bang on, you know what I mean? 
very cool, proper fights, you got to train, you know what I mean? Do you see yourself getting your trainer's licence front board, Tony? Or aren't you got no respect for board? Well, no, I can get well, don't know, like you said, the Yorkshire board, I mean, he, he's, he's a good pal of mine, he's a good pal of mine, he's a good pal of mine, you know, well, I should get it, I should get it all right, I'm going for the licence, but then I think to myself, is it really what you want to do, I mean, a 50, probably not 55, 60, then you get one or two kids where you, I could offer them the, the thing, but then, I think I want to concentrate on the, my, my job with these, uh, I yeah, that's good that, that's good. And are you settled at home and all that, Tony, now you're out of boxing and is yeah, your life a lot home. better? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it's my 23rd birthday today, my lad's birthday, yeah. I'm just going to uh, sit there for a walk a bit. I mean, the modelling is dried up, you know what I mean? There's no more modelling work. <laughs> Oh, you're full of... Are you using... Are you using Ellie Stone? I am a bit funny because I did this show for my mate with Dean Windis and uh, I was on stage about 50 minutes so I got a lot of stories and I got, I got four bookings. I got four bookings for these tours, like £400 a night. And then uh, the, next, the next morning there's a knock on the door. I look outside the window, four four police fans. I thought they'd come to book me for the Christmas ball. That's when I got arrested, didn't I? You know what I mean? That's when I got that nah, year. Well, that's a shame. So, that was a shame, wasn't it? I should be another book out. You read, the, you read my first book? No, I don't know. What's it called? Boxing Booth. Oh, that's Boxing good, that, isn't it? Oh, good. Yeah, let's get you a copy. It's good. But I'll have to bring another one out. I could bring in the second book out with uh, the bit of what happened in jail or the things what's happened in uh, boxing. Hey, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Exposing a few people, asking you to take dives. Yeah, well, you couldn't really expose. I couldn't expose them. I could like just say, uh, "I'm being offered." You know what I mean? Which I have. I mean, they should get someone like that. one of these purpose offer me a few quid. I mean, that's a few. I mean, yeah, be a few in the box. There'll be a few on the boxing on the steroids and all that. What? I had one drug test. What do you think to these move arounds that fighters have, Tony? What do you think to them when they have a move around? What does that mean? What do you mean? Well, you know when they fight, you know when a, a pro, a kid who's like five and six and now, fights somebody with loads of losses and they say it's a move around. What, is that a fight or is it, are they just going through motions? What is it, a move around? Oh, no, not really. I mean, sometimes, I mean, you can, you can get these kids where they're not beaten, they can fight like a, a proper gentleman and get beat, you know what I mean? No, a move round. No, move round. No, I think move round's more like if they got two kids from there, uh, two kids from the same camp, just have a move round with him. You know what I mean? It's can't really. If he's even if he's a gentleman, they're still gonna have to beat him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. John Beckles had four fights in America. So he's called us and one of the world rated and WBA champion. His first fight in in England at Batsy. He comes out, I mean, the ring family's waiting for him. He comes out to buy white and all that, thinking it's a beast, days. And then he nearly knocks me out in the second round. And I stop him in the sixth round, don't I? Devastated he was. All right. Then I fought Martin Langtree, he had 10 fights. One of them stop, stopped them all, one of them all. I beat him. Like you say, I've retained more men to Social Security. And I won more, listen, I might have lost more fights than I won, but I won more fights than any English boxer. Yeah. What do you uh, think to current situation at the moment? Who do you think is best heavyweight in world boxing? Best heavyweight? Uh, I best heavyweight? Uh, well, it's a nice Tyson Fury can't have what Tyson's done. I mean, I think his dad's looking after him now. He's, he's, he's done everything. You know, I mean, he's gone there, he's boxed him, he's beat him. He's six foot now and he's awkward. But to be honest, when he was fighting at the Crown, did a bit of turn at the Crown Strip. If he turns southpaw, six foot nine southpaw, I mean, the thing is with Tyson, if he gets caught with a shot, he'll stand there and have a toe to toe. You know what I mean? I think it'd be interesting if he fought Joshua, because Joshua's got a bit of power, but he's got a bit of a glass chin, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if Joshua would have stood toe to toe with that rule his second time, he'd got him locked out again. You think? 
Yeah, if he'd have stood there torch to toe that rules, definitely, yeah, he got beat. I mean he got a glass chin, hasn't he? Do you think he looked frightened, Joshua, in that fight, Tony? You what? Do you think Joshua were frightened in rematch to engage? Oh, of course he was. He was standing there. Oh, did he want to stand there, touch at all? I mean, that rules didn't look like he'd done, done much training, but yeah. He's got a glass chin, I mean, Joshua. He's been, he's only been a couple of times and wobbled. But obviously, he's got a lot of power. Yeah, it's. Uh... I know a kid who sparred with Joshua. Klitschko and Fury, he said Fury was the most awkward, but Joshua, like, Joshua, like, he's the artist. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see how it, uh, how it I all mean, unfolds. That Wilder, that Wilder, that last fight, he won, I mean, it did seem like an on jiggy, he didn't have a go, did he? Didn't have no, a go. No. I mean, when you, if you fight in the first time, you get speed. What Wilder should have done, he should have got loads of sparring partners in six foot now and just tried doing something. And when you watch him fight, he didn't do out, did he? No, no. He was shot. It just looked, it just looked a bit fixed for me for like a fair fight, but Tyson boxed well. He can't knock him. Yeah, he did. He boxed well. He boxed out of his skin, didn't he? I think, well, I think he's just a bad bunch at the moment. One of my favourite boxers of all time is Larry Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was the only world champion, he'd be him all for seven years. You know what, I mean? what would Larry Holmes do to this division today? Alright, murder him, wouldn't he? Murder him. What about Larry Holmes and Tyson? Well, Tyson had murdered them all, though. But, I mean, when Tyson beat Larry Holmes, Larry Holmes had finished. It would finished, he's getting on a bit. And uh, I've not told the story, uh, Don, Don King goes to his house, he's telling his Larry Holmes. He says he's in his house and Don King goes, I mean, he's supposed to be a few hundred million, really, Larry Holmes. Yeah. And he says, uh, Don, Don King turns up at the house. He says, Don't want to fight Mike Tyson. He said, I'll fight Mike Tyson, I'm retired. He said, Three and a half million. What I mean? I'd fight him for three and a half. I mean, I didn't want to fight him, wouldn't you? Know? What did Larry say then? What? What did Larry say to that when he said three and a half million? He said, yeah, I'll fight him. <laughs> <laughs> he, gets, he gets beat, like, he, gets, he gets put down three or four times, but he gets up every time. Yeah. You know I mean? But it'd be a fascinating fight to... What, it, I mean, one of the best fights I've seen is uh, Larry Holmes against uh, Jerry Coney. Cracking fight, and he was knocking him all out. Jerry Coney, good fight that, you know, watch it. Yeah, yeah, it well, was, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, All right then. Well, listen. Thanks for coming on, Tony. Yeah. You've been yeah, brilliant. So what do you do? What do you do? You, you, you send me a check and parents for you, something like that. Uh, <laughs> no. no, no. He's, text, he's text me this morning, uh, Mr. Collinson. Oh, has he? Have you told him? Yeah. No, I will do that. I will do that. Give him my regards, my old yeah. cellmate. <laughs> do you know he played Barry Hearn? He played Barry Hearn, two week on trot on that Channel 5 uh, poker tournament. Oh, right. Barry, yeah. Barry Hearn and he got wiped out, two week on trot, Shane, by yeah. going, just going for it straight away. So we, we, we watched it, in, I watched it in prison because he was my yeah. cellmate and he got out. He said, I'm going to play Barry Hearn on this Channel 5 uh, program. So yeah. he, when he, when I got out, I went to see him. Right, he's got a gambling problem on his Shane, massive. And we were in Bucky's this day. We we we're near where you live, and he did about fourteen grand in it, Bucky's. And he got to the stage where he, he wasn't going to put the bet on, so he gave it me to put on. And I felt like not putting it on because they were just throwing yeah. grands at these donkeys, and, I, and it's an addiction, isn't it? Yeah, man, uh, yeah. But he, Barry used to play uh, poker with my pal, Devilfish or Daddy. Devilfish, that's him, yeah, that, that's who uh, were in charge at tournament, he, the Devilfish. Yeah, yeah well, he's, he's one of the, he the world title, like, you know what I mean? Really Dave, you know what I mean? Yeah. Top ball, but he died when I came out of jail in 2015, yeah. Yeah, but... He's uh, always shit, though, yeah. Yeah, he, you know what, he's had millions, hasn't he, Shane? Oh, yeah. yeah. And lost millions. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I saw that article about him in uh, on internet. I think the other day, he'd uh, what had he done now? He just he went to fight in Iceland as on docks at all or something. <laughs> he did. Yeah, that's what it said or something. Yeah, something like that. It's uh, it, it's on all, in all paper or something. He's a character, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's all right. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, tell him, tell him you've spoke to uh, to me, and uh, he'll he'll tell you some he'll tell you some stories. We had a right laugh in jail, me and him. Like, so you got... he, so he remembers your number. Yeah, give me number. Yeah, I'll give you my number. It'd be nice to speak to Shane. I'm not spoke to him for a long time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.